for killing five people, police finding him in a, quote, zombie-like state. And rising waters, massive flooding, homes underwater, families evacuated, why it's expected to get worse. Tonight, our team in the flood zone. This is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas. We begin with the heavyweight showdown about 24 hours from now. Final touches in place for the first one-on-one -on -one battle debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Clinton off the campaign trail for four days, practicing with mock debates. Trump given videos of Clinton's past debates and House Speaker Paul Ryan telling him to over-prepare for the meeting. A new ABC News poll underscoring the importance of tomorrow's debate. Take a look. The candidates separated by two points, a virtual dead heat. ABC Cecilia Vega on the debate that could be a game changer. Cecilia. Hey, Tom, this is it, and these are RNC officials on the stage here behind me making their final checks. We are talking about history on this stage tomorrow. As many as 100 million people expected to tune in, we are talking about the Super Bowl of American politics. The road to the White House passes by this stage, the epic showdown a day away. But tonight, a different grudge match over who gets a coveted invite to the show. After Hillary Clinton's team offered what they say is one of the best seats they have to Mark Cuban, Donald Trump's billionaire reality TV nemesis. I just don't see him as being capable in the least bit. Trump took to Twitter, threatening to offer an invitation of his own, saying, if dopey Mark Cuban of failed benefactor fame wants to sit in the front row, perhaps I will put Jennifer Flowers right alongside of him. Jennifer Flowers being the woman who had an affair with Bill Clinton decades ago. Yes. Trump's campaign manager now says okay. Flowers was never actually invited. This debate should not be about what billionaire can Hillary Clinton put in the front row. She has a right to be there if somebody else gives her a ticket. Clinton, a veteran with 34 presidential debates under her belt, has been deep in preparation from briefing books to mock debates. I think that uh, Donald Trump's uh, bigotry, his uh, bullying, his bluster um, are not going to wear well on the American people. Trump, no stranger to the stage either. He's done 11, but never one on one. And no mock debates for him, just question and answer sessions. His aides worried he hasn't practiced enough. I'm the only one that beats Hillary Clinton. This time, just the two of them alone for 90 minutes. Six topics. Clinton gets the first question. Trump has two minutes to respond. Both sides already fighting about moderators. Clinton's team says it's their job to fact check. All that we're asking is that if Donald Trump lies, uh, that it's pointed out. I'm sure Trump's we'll team says not so news. fast. And I, I really don't appreciate campaigns thinking it is the job of the media to go and be these virtual fact checkers. And Cecilia Vega just steps from the debate stage. You said Clinton gets the first question and tonight you've learned other new details. Yeah, Tom, we have learned that Hillary Clinton will be stage left. Donald Trump will be stage right. We know that after the first round of questions, there will be about 10 minutes of open debate and conversation and that these rules were came in part because of agreements between the campaign and also, Tom, because of a coin toss. They won't tell us who won which ones. The power of the coin toss. All right, Cecilia, thank you so much. Millions of Americans watching tomorrow night and this year's Democratic and Republican debates putting the spotlight on Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump at their best and at their worst. Here's ABC's Mary Bruce. Tonight, the candidates fine-tuning plans of attack. This guy will say anything. Nasty guy. Clinton may try to get Trump to lose his cool and raise questions about his temperament. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs. Only Rosie several. O'Donnell. Clinton's dealing with a major X factor, which Trump will show up. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? Will he be crass or controlled? The guns don't pull the trigger. It's the people that pull the trigger. And we have to find out what is going on. The job of Hillary Clinton is going to be tough if Donald Trump shows up and has basically done what he's done the last few weeks, which is the I'm not crazy tour. For weeks, Trump has tried to put Clinton on defense. I did uh, exactly what I should have done, and I take it very seriously, always have, always will. The challenge for her, showcasing her experience and some personality. Which enemy are you most proud of? In addition to the NRA, um, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, um, the Iranians, um, 
probably the Republicans. <laughs> Both candidates hoping to avoid being their own worst enemy, those infamous debate blunders. From Al Gore's size That's what a governor gets to, to George H.W. Bush and his untimely time check. And the candidates don't just need to expose each other's weaknesses, they need to make themselves seem more likable. Our poll tonight showing both of them still facing unprecedented unfavorability ratings. Tom? Mary Bruce for us tonight. Mary, thank you. Let's get right to ABC Chief Political Analyst Matt Dowd. Now, Matt, there's still a large percentage of undecided voters. How important is tomorrow's debate? I think this moment of the, of the campaign is the most important moment that we've seen in the entirety of the campaign. It's the only really authentic moment to occur. It's not television ads. It's not speeches. It's the first time they stand on stage basically naked in front of the public. You've done this before. If you were advising Hillary Clinton tonight or Donald Trump, what would you tell them? Uh, Hillary Clinton, I think they need to switch positions, actually. I think Hillary Clinton needs to show more heart. I mean, he needs to show more head and less heart and connect at a visceral level. And for Donald Trump, he needs to connect more at a rational level and show more head. I think he needs to get in more in detail and more substance. So in effect, switching positions that they've had over the course of the campaign. No doubt it will be an exciting night. All right, Matt, thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. ABC News will have complete coverage of the presidential debate. George will be joined by Martha Raddatz, David Muir, John Carl, and myself, along with Cecilia Vega, Byron Pitts, and, of course, Matt Dowd, plus Cokie Roberts. That's tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC. We do move on now to a stunning tragedy on the water. Miami Marlins star pitcher Jose Fernandez, one of three people killed in a deadly boating accident. Fernandez escaping Cuba as a teenager and quickly becoming one of the best in baseball and recently announcing some big family news. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. Tonight, investigators surrounding the chilling overturned wreckage from an accident that killed a beloved baseball all-star. Miami Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez and two other men dying early this morning when their boat slammed into a jetty off the coast of Miami Beach. It does appear that speed was involved. Uh, due to the impact. Today's Marlins game canceled as teammates tearfully pay tribute to the 24 year old known for his fastball, infectious personality, and passion for the sport. When you watch kids play Little League, that's the joy that. Jose played with. That joy radiating through his pride at becoming an American. Jailed in Cuba as a teenager for trying to defect, Fernandez finally made it to the U.S. on his fourth attempt. He sacrificed his life to leave in a, in a press country. His grandmother traveling from Cuba in 2013, emotionally surprising him just before he was named Rookie of the Year. And Fernandez was starting a family of his own, posting this picture on Instagram just five days ago of his pregnant girlfriend. It's a tremendous loss, and my heart goes out to his family. And investigators say they don't believe drugs or alcohol were factors in the crash, adding Fernandez and the other two victims were not wearing life vests. Tom? An incredibly sad accident. Okay, Marcy, thank you. New developments tonight in the deadly police shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina. Police under intense pressure releasing two pieces of video showing the moment officers shot and killed Keith Lamont Scott. And protesters demanding all police video should be made public and the city bracing for a sixth night of demonstrations. ABC's Eva Pilgrim back in Charlotte for us tonight. Tonight, the much requested police video finally released, leaving many questions. That new police video showing Keith Lamont Scott getting out of his SUV, walking backwards slowly, hands at his side. Experts honing in on whether his left hand was holding an object. His arms stay down, then four shots. You cannot determine whether this is a justified shoot only based on the video that's been released. In the body cam footage, officers run to Scott with their guns drawn. I can see his hand. His hand. You hear the officers talking about a gun, but you can't see it. This still image from that police video shows one of Scott's pants legs lifted. Well, when you look at it initially, it looks like some sort of leather device. Uh, you might logically conclude that it is some sort of ankle holster. Family members say the father of seven was just sitting in his SUV waiting to pick up his son from school. Officers were in the neighborhood to arrest someone else when authorities say they saw Scott with the marijuana and gun and made the decision to approach him. It does not make sense to us how it was possible that this incident resulted in the loss of life. In video recorded by his wife, released by the family earlier, his wife there witnessed the shooting clearly in anguish. And he better live. 
he better live because he didn't do nothing to them. Tonight, protesters outside of the Panthers game calling for more video to be released. We want the whole video, an, an undoctored video. Police say they will release the rest of the video when this investigation is complete. Tom? Eva Pilgrim. Eva, thank you. To the West now and new details tonight about the suspect behind bars accused of that deadly mall shooting in Washington State. The 20-year-old spotted by police walking down the street and police say he was in a zombie-like state. ABC's Neil Karlinski on how police tracked him down. Tonight at alleged shooter Arjun Chetan's house, we found his stepfather outside and in no mood to talk. So if you want to contact me. Overnight, alert police recognized and arrested the 20-year-old Chetan simply walking down the street near his home about 40 minutes from the scene of the shootings. A remarkably peaceful end to a horrific murder spree. He said nothing. Uh, he was uh, kind of zombie-like. It took police 24 hours to track him down, following a breadcrumb trail of surveillance photos leading to his car. Police say the man in shorts and a t-shirt with a rifle killing five inside this Macy's Friday night is Shatan, a Turkish immigrant and small town grocery bagger. The Seattle Times reports he has a criminal record including domestic assault charges. People who knew the suspect say they saw nothing out of the ordinary. Kids kind of recognize him. They said it might be and I was like, no way. Police are looking into reports Shatan's ex-girlfriend may have worked at the Macy's, but for now the motive remains unclear. The victims, ranging from a teenage cancer survivor to a senior citizen, were in the makeup department at Macy's around 7 p.m. Friday when gunfire erupted. Police say they've ruled nothing out, but at this point they don't believe there is a link to terrorism. And as the mall here prepares to reopen tomorrow, the suspect will be making his first court appearance. Tom? Neil, thank you. Tonight, an urgent warning in the Cleveland area. Authorities say seven people died from drug overdoses in just one day. Investigators believe the drug involved was either heroin or fentanyl. The medical examiner is looking for a possible link. Now to the flood emergency in Iowa. Rivers rising, forcing evacuations in Cedar Rapids and families facing some of the worst flooding in years. The danger expected to grow worse as we head into the week. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano in the flood zone tonight. Tonight, the major flooding disaster in Iowa is only getting worse. Up to seven feet of water submerging homes. Entire neighborhoods swamped by rivers. The only way in or out is by boat. We built what we thought would be good enough, but it wasn't. We'll rebuild back. This baby deer getting caught in the water surge. A good Samaritan rushing to rescue it from the dangerous currents. And in Cedar Rapids, they're scrambling to fill thousands of sandbags to protect against the growing threat. Evacuations begin tonight as residents brace for one of the worst floods in the city's history. And we need to push hard these next two days to be fully prepared for that crest. Right behind me, one of several bridges shut down in anticipation of that water coming almost up to street level, which means it's going to come easily to this area, which is why they built these temporary Haskell barriers to keep this river from inundating the city. Forecast to crest on Tuesday at 23 feet, as will the other tributaries to the Mississippi, which won't crest until a week from Sunday, a long duration event they haven't seen since 2008, which was devastating. They're hoping they're more prepared this time. Tom? And we hope those barriers hold. All right, Rob, thank you. Still ahead here on World News Tonight this Sunday. Gunfire rings out near a major college campus. The suspect on the loose, what police are saying tonight. And the little girl making the 911 call that may have saved her mother's life. An incredible story. Are there lessons here for your family? And the daring Coast Guard rescue, the crew's gone terribly wrong for one man, why he had to be airlifted from sea. ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Voya Financial. Hey, Jesse. Uh, who are you? I'm Vern, the Orange Money Retirement Rabbit from Voya. Vern from Voya? Yep, yeah, Vern from Voya. Uh, why are you orange? That's a little weird. Really? That's the weird part in the scenario? Look, orange money represents the money you put away for retirement. Save a little here and there, and over time, your money could multiply. See? Oh, okay. So, why are you orange? Funny. See how Voya can help you get organized at Voya.com. We're producing record amounts.